drummers, our musicians, our workers in this church, our Sunday school teachers. Uh, I, you don't get enough recognition, to be honest with you, but I tell you, y'all just make this church what it is. And I thank God as your pastor for our youth pastors, all of our teachers, and uh, just y'all do your own things. Y'all take a part. Every single Wednesday night, without fail, Sister Christina always takes the children out. Never complains about it, but she does it every Wednesday night. She is just a blessing. And we love you. Appreciate you. Jay and Sasha. Jay works all hours of the day. and uh, But yet, he's always here to take the kids out. And we appreciate them. Unless they're all sick. <laughs> we got a lot of people sick on this. <laughs> but uh, so thankful for all of you. And, uh, those that are on a rotating schedule. You're just as important. Amen. You help fill needs and uh, preach the Lord. Amen. Just love all of you and all of our deacons and just, just everybody. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning at verse number 3. Amen. I want to preach what the Lord has laid upon my heart. Amen. How many believe Jesus is coming? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Miranda asked me what I was preaching this past week, and I said, we're preaching about the end times. She said, again? I said, I believe we're living in the end times. I'm sorry. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord. It's in my spirit. Amen. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Now it's not the time to get lukewarm and lethargic. Come on, now's not the time to backslide and walk away from Jesus. He's coming soon. And He's coming at an hour in which we think not. Amen. And uh, I'll tell you, that, that's good news for us that are saved. He's coming. Why is it good news? I'll give you one little illustration before we, or an example before we get into this word. Uh, I think it was on, uh, was it... I know it was this past week, it was maybe Thursday, uh, I got a call from Dolores. She said, Pastor, can you come and pray? My sister's very, she's dying. And she went home to be with the Lord. It's very hard on Sister Dolores. She's been a caregiver for, she told me, 30-something years. Wonderful. How many know it takes a special person to be a caregiver? Amen. And, uh, as we were talking, I could just see the hurt. But a little later on, I, I was just by myself, just thinking, praying. And I just began to think to myself, oh, Lord, it won't be long <laughs> until there is a resurrection. And when there's a resurrection, there's a what? There's a reunion. Amen. Amen. Kathleen, it won't be long. And you and Bill are going to be reunited. Amen. How many of you got loved ones waiting for you in heaven? Oh, let's lift our hands and, and thank the Lord. The Bible says we are compassed about. We're surrounded. We're, it's like, have you ever seen like the Rose Bowl? USC playing in the Rose Bowl? Okay, don't, I know I don't have a church full of nerds. All right. <laughs> but then you look at the Rose Bowl and you see nearly 100,000 people watching USC whoop up on Alabama or Oklahoma or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are an OU fan. I like you, but I'm starting not to. I know where you live. But man, they everybody, thousands of people watching those two teams play. Brothers and sisters, we've got an even greater audience. That 100,000 people like the Rose Bowl. We've got millions and millions of Christians that have gone on before us, watching us, cheering us on, rooting for us. They're not communicating with you. Come on. Well, mama, come saw me in a dream. No, it wasn't your mama. <laughs> well, so and so come and, and I saw them. They appeared in my house. No, 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 that wasn't your love. That was a demon spirit. Come on, you can you preach it like that as well. But I'll tell you, up in heaven, they are dancing, rejoicing, praising God, having the most wonderful time they can have in the presence of the Lord. Because in His presence, there's what? Fullness of joy. 
They are watching us. They are encouraging us. So let's keep fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm going to hang in there. Amen. I'm going to hang in there. Because Jesus said, he that endures to the end, the same will be saved. All right. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. If you're there, shall he's coming. He's coming. All right. I like that. He's coming. It says this, verse number 3. Let no man deceive you. Uh-oh, that lets us know that there are deceivers that come to try and lie to us and deceive us, trick us, cause us to falter in our faith. Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The rapture. That day shall not come except there come a, great, a falling away first. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin revealed the son of perdition. That right there, speaking of the Antichrist. With the help of the Holy Spirit today, I'm going to preach what he's birthed in my spirit this past week. Give it to you. The great falling away. Amen. The great falling away. Help me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I humbly come before you asking for your anointing. Jesus, I know you are coming soon. And Lord, I ask you that the not one person in here would be left behind whenever you come. I pray against distraction from the inside to the outside. I bind it in the name of Jesus. This word is far too important for us to get our minds off of your word. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds able to comprehend. I pray for our children. Uh, that are downstairs uh, in some of our uh, is set teaching today, Lord. Anoint him, Lord. Anoint Brother Ray and our teachers, Lord. Use them in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. The great falling away. In our text, Paul the Apostle was addressing an error that the church in Thessalonica had come to believe. Someone had given them a word of prophecy claiming that the rapture of the church had already taken place and that they, that church was living in the tribulation period. This, of course, threw those believers in Thessalonica into great confusion. Why didn't we hear the trumpet of God sound? Why are we still here on this earth. What was it in our hearts that caused us to miss the rapture? How many know it would be a horrifying thing for you to think that you missed the rapture? Amen. One time when I was about, oh, probably about eight years old, my family went off for a walk while I took a nap. And guess what? I woke up and I began to walk around the house. And sure enough, I thought the rapture had happened. I was looking for a closet that I could hide in. I didn't want to, I didn't want to face the Antichrist. I mean, I knew he was coming to 204 Day Avenue. I knew that for sure. He was looking for me. <laughs> oh, but you see, the church in Thessalonica, though, they were greatly distressed. They were worried. They were strongly just, just hurt in their hearts thinking, oh, no, it's awful. We have missed the rapture of the church. In an earlier letter, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 20, the Apostle Paul told that church not to despise prophesying. But apparently somebody within that congregation had given them a word that the rapture had happened and they didn't know enough about the coming of the Lord in order to know otherwise. Here's a word of advice. Whenever somebody gives you a word of prophecy, make sure it lines up with what God's written word has to say. Because if it doesn't line up with the Bible, it is not a word that comes from the Lord. In our text, Paul was making it very clear to that Thessalonian church that the rapture would not take place until after a great falling away it happened. Paul was saying that before the rapture of the church can happen, before the Antichrist comes on the scene, there will be a time in which the church of the Lord Jesus Christ endures a great falling away. Now in Paul's day, they were not experiencing this great falling
falling away yet. The church was growing. The gospel was spreading. The spirit of the Lord was moving with signs and wonders following. But Paul said there is coming a day. There is coming an hour. There is coming a generation in which many people will fall away from the Lord. And then after this great falling away takes place, the rapture will occur. Brothers and sisters, although the Spirit of the Lord is still moving today just as much as He ever has been amongst those who allow Him to move, we are living in the midst of a great falling away. We are living in that very dispensation of time in which the Apostle Paul told us about in the Scripture. Many today are falling away from the truth of God's Word. Many are turning away from everything that is found within the Word of God. It's just a matter of time now before the rapture of the church takes place and the Antichrist rises on the scene and makes his appearance. This great falling away is already here and that's what I want to talk about today. This very well may be the most important message or 30 minutes you ever hear for the rest of your life. But pay attention because Jesus is coming and he's coming very soon. Number one, I want you to know that many today have fallen away from the truth. Amen. Many have fallen away from the truth. What is truth? Well, Jesus told us in John 17, 17, that thy word is truth. How many know God's word is truth? Amen. Everything that is written in the word of God is absolutely true. You can count on the word of God. How many believe that? This morning, everything in this Bible is absolutely true. For example, Genesis 1:27. It tells us that whenever God created us, He made us man and female. Can you say amen this morning? But today there has been a great falling away from the truths of God's Word. In Loudoun County, Virginia, a high school de uh, decided to remove its male and female signs from the bathrooms. This gives students in that school to use whichever bathroom they identify as. That means that if a boy wants to think he's a girl, he can go and sit in the girl's bathroom with the girls. And if a girl thinks she's a boy, she can go and use the boy's bathroom. Oh, however, removing the bathroom signs of male and female was not enough to satisfy this particular school. Whenever a biological female Female walked into the men's restroom. She noticed that there were still urinals on the wall. She threw a little hissy fit and said, these urinals offend me. Yes, I am a man in my mind. What did the school board do? Did they say, hey, little pervert, be quiet? No, that's not what they did. They went ahead and removed all the urinals just to be politically correct. Brothers and sisters, how can we get to a society in which people do the most dumbest things you can imagine it's because there has been a falling away from the truth of God's word. Amen. There's a push right now to give newborn babies gender neutral names. The idea behind that is that whenever the baby gets older, it can decide which sex that it wants to be. A little boy or a little girl. I'm talking about a falling away from the truth. How have we ended up here in this society. Oh, it's because the rapture could not take place until the great falling away happened first. There is no more excuses. There is no more hindrances. Israel has become a nation. They now occupy Jerusalem as their own capital. There's been a great falling away. The next thing to happen is the come of him of Revelation chapter 4 verse number 1. If you're excited about the coming of the Lord like me, why don't you just lift up your hands, lift up your head and say, Lord, come quickly. Maranatha, I'm ready to see you, Jesus. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Can you say that? Did you know today
Okay, that 30% of Americans never read the Bible. 30% of Americans never, not one time, read the Bible. Here's the sad stat, though. Did you know that only 11% of Americans today read their Bibles on a daily basis? Only 11% of Americans read their Bibles on a daily basis. Basis. No wonder there has been such a falling away from the truth. Remember, what is the truth? It is the word of God. Jesus said, thy word is truth. But when you do not believe this truth, you'll do any old wicked thing that there is. Here's another sad statistic. Today, 60% of Christians, this is my generation, between the ages of 18 and 39... Believe that Jesus is not the only way. 60% of the church generation in which I belong in, according to my age, 60% believe that Jesus can get you to heaven, or that, that, that Muhammad, or Buddha, or Joseph Smith, or Charles Tass Russell, or Mary Baker Eddy, any of them can get you to heaven just as much as Jesus. I've got news for this modern day bachelor church generation. There is still only one way to get to heaven. And that one way is Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And no man comes unto the Father unless he comes to Jesus. There is one mediator. One God. One lawyer. One go between, between God and man. That's the Son of Man. Christ Jesus. And it's for Jesus. Amen. Did you know today that 30% of Christians also of that same age, I'll tell you, that I know there is a remnant. There's all, God's always going to have a remnant. Come on. He's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. But 30% of Christians today, between the ages of 18 and 39, also believe that Jesus sinned. Yeah, right. If Jesus had sinned, we're all wasting our time here today. Oh, I like what Isaiah said. Neither was there guile found in his mouth. Paul said he became sin. Who knew no sin? That you would not might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We all serve no sinful Savior, but he's totally spotless. He's the Lamb slain. From the foundation of the world, only his blood could have washed away my sin. I'm talking about in the last days. There will be a great, not a little falling away, a great falling away from the truth. Church, we are living in that day. Can you say amen? There's a great falling away from the truth. Number two, I want to tell you that many have fallen away from church. Come on. Many have fallen away from the church. Amen. Oh, whenever I say the church, I'm not just talking about this church body. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ as a whole. People have no problem going to work every day. People have no problem going to Walmart even when they got COVID. People have no problem going here and going there. But whenever it's time for church, we make every single excuse in the world as to why I can't go. Oh, if the truth be told, one reason why some people aren't as faithful to church as they should be is because they are right in there with the midst of a great falling away. You see, many people have adopted the mindset that you don't need church in order to get to heaven. You don't need church in order to be a Christian. May I remind you, you don't need a parachute to go skydiving, but a parachute sure does help. Can you say amen this morning? Why do you need church? You need church because this life gets hard. You need this house because life gets tough. Life gets rough. Marriages get attacked. Children get attacked. Finances get attacked. Physical bodies get attacked. But there's a special strength from on high that comes down and settles in this house. And whatever steps into these waters, it gets laid hold. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this morning, now's not the time to get lukewarm and to walk away from God. Now's not the time to become inconsistent in your church attendance. 
church. I'm giving you evangelism. I'm giving you a five-fold ministry to bless you and equip you and to help you in your walk with God. Amen. I don't need a doctor to be healthy. Come on. But a doctor may just find something growing on me that I wasn't aware of. Hello, somebody. I may just think I'm totally fine. But a doctor may say, hmm, what's that spot on your head? Come on. I was raised where we didn't go to the doctor. Not because mom and dad didn't believe in it. But because mom and dad didn't have insurance. <laughs> so sometimes you're forced to believe things. <laughs> we did go to the Indian reservation if it got real bad. <laughs> go to the Thule Indian reservation over by the Eagle Mountain Casino. You guys don't know where that is, so I'm just... <laughs> I know, I know. It was quiet. Everybody's like, has the pastor been tracking me? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so we, we, didn't, we weren't raised around doctors. We weren't raised like in a little thing. We'd just go and see the doctor. We just, we just got over it. I mean, we were blessed like that. Some people are blessed with that. Thank God for that. My little Joe, he's not like that. He's not like that. He's a sickly little guy. He's, I mean, the cold turns into a weak sickness for him. And uh, But anyway, so uh, I don't go to the doctor, but one time Marlene, she said, Pastor, when are you going to get that spot on your head checked out? I said, oh, you know, Miranda's been telling me I need to get it checked out for like a year. <laughs> but now that Marlene's telling me, I better go. <laughs> 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 uh, so I went there and they looked at it and go, mm, I know what that is. That's uh, I forget what kind it is, but it's a skin cancer, right? Right on your head. And uh, it wasn't like the deadly, there's one that's a, a real uh, terrible one. This one was just just something that grows and it makes you look ugly or whatever it's supposed to. That's the one you your shoulders. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I went to the doctor and he goes, yep, that's exactly what it is. You got a skin cancer right there. So you know what they did, Tom? They gave me a shot. They did a biopsy. Or after they found that, after they knew it was cancer, they cut it off, removed it from me. But you see, if I would have never went to that doctor, I still had this little cancer growing bigger and bigger right here on my forehead. See, some people think, well, I don't need a pastor. Jesus is my pastor. Well, the problem is you don't listen to Jesus. Come on. I had somebody tell me one time, I don't need you to be my pastor. Jesus is my pastor. I feel sorry for him. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we need church. We need the house of God. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 25, it tells us not to forsake the assembling. That's the gathering of ourselves together as the manner of some do, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day was Paul talking about? He was talking about the rapture of the church. In other words, the closer we get to to the rapture, the more you and I ought to be gathering together in order to worship the Lord. But unfortunately, there's been a great falling away from the church in these last days. In the 1950s, how many were around in the 1950s? Yeah. <laughs> a couple of us. Yeah. yeah, some people are like, I'm not saying I am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what year were you born, Tom? 54. All right, my dad was born 58. Hannah? No, no. 56. Yeah, 56. 56. Hannah was born 56. All right. She looks young for that age. In the 1950s, 76% of American families attended church on a weekly basis. 76% of American families attended church on a weekly basis. Now, I'm not saying everybody in the 50s had their act all together. They uh, did No, no, no. When you segregating the whites and the blacks, don't tell me you had everything all together. Come on, church. Come on. I 
I, I know some people, well, my generations, but we all got problems. Every generation needs Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, they needed Jesus in the 50s. The hippies needed Jesus in the 60s. The disco people needed Jesus in the 70s. The hair bands needed Jesus in the 80s. Saint by the Bell needed Jesus in the 90s. And after 2000, nothing else really matters. <laughs> We all need Jesus. Can you say amen? 76% of Americans in the 1950s attended church every single week. But today, only 31% of families in America attend church on a weekly basis. No wonder we're in the shape that we're in. What will the percentage be if the Lord should tarry? If the Lord's delay is coming, what will the percentage of churchgoers be 20 to 30 years from now? Oh, I'm talking about a great falling away. Paul said before the trumpet of God ever sounds, before that great notable day of the Lord, before the rapture of the church takes place, there will be a great falling away. Number three today, I want to tell you that many have fallen away from the Lord. Amen. Many have fallen away from the Lord. I battle weight problems all of my life. Life. All my life. Yeah, I know. Yeah. One time I lost over a hundred pounds. I did. I found it, but I, I lost it at one time. And I still remember after I lost a good hundred pounds, and how'd you do it? I just quit eating right. Just or not quit eating right. I quit eating. You don't need as much food as you think you do. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I ain't going to starve. <laughs> Take a while to starve me. Anyway, but I lost about 100 pounds. And I still remember where we were. Me and Miranda, we were at La Tapatia here in Oldale. And she looked at me and she said, baby, I love you, but your face is sinking in. I didn't marry a little toothpick. You need to pack on a little bit of weight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And whenever she told me that, she gave me the green light, Brother Frank, to go ahead, bring it on. Add another enchilada. Add another chili riana. I love chili riana, especially if you want a good chili riana, lock top of tea, the best chili riana in Bakersfield. Oh, but I'll tell you, I just started eating and eating, and you know what I said? You know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to start eating right again. One day won't hurt. The next day, yeah, I didn't even gain any weight. That's crazy. Oh, I can eat like that again. I gained a pound. Oh, man, it's just one pound. I lost another. I can get it all quick. I'll do it in that tomorrow, you know. Somebody invited us out to eat, you know. I got to be polite. Sure enough, I said, I'll start again my diet tomorrow. How many of you, how many of you dieters starting tomorrow? Okay, a couple of us. Me and little Phil, we're going to start tomorrow. <laughs> we got that Glasgow blood in us. <laughs> we like to eat. <laughs> Ten years later, I'm still waiting on tomorrow to start that diet. It all started with one night of compromise. And it led me to more and more and more. Church, it's no different in our walk with the Lord. Nobody falls away from Jesus overnight. It is a gradual process. It starts with little things. One little strife from a brother or sister in church. One little root of bitterness. One little sin. Oh, I'm not as bad as other people are. The next thing that happens is your heart becomes to get hardened. No longer do you look for church. No longer do you sing. No longer do you have a smile. No longer do you have a desire to pray. No longer do you have a desire to worship the Lord. You see, it starts out little and it ends great. I'm talking about in the last days there'll be a great falling away from the Lord. Millions are in that place right now and I believe under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit there may be one or two or three or four here today that are in the process of growing cold in the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is sitting me here today you need to stir up the gift of God that is within you. You don't fire for Jesus once again. Don't get lukewarm. Don't backslide. Don't go back to the things of this world. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
God. The same shall be saved. Maybe you're in a place where, man, you used to be able to be touched by the presence of Jesus. You'd weep in the house of God. You'd get along with God in prayer and you'd just cry at his feet. But now, you only pray because you feel obligated to. Now you only worship when you talk to. You become basically a puppet. Let's all lift our hands. Hey, good job, guys. <laughs> Simon says, put your hand up. <laughs> Let's all lift up our hands, every. Let's all say amen. Amen. Come on, sometimes we only do things because we're told to. What if the only time I told my wife I loved her was when she told me to tell her that? Come on. Hello, somebody. Honey, tell me you love me. That was real sincere, wasn't it? It sounds like it. What? What was that? I love you. Dismiss us in prayer. <laughs> Father. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Ashley brought me a blueberry cheesecake, a cherry cheesecake, and my wife just told me she loves me. I'm like, good afternoon. <laughs> and then a church singing tonight. Praise God. God's good, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but sometimes we just say these things to the Lord just like out of obligation to Him. Come on. God says, I don't want you to worship me with your words. I want you to worship me from your heart. Yeah, right. Amen. I want you to, I want to know how much you love me. I want to know how much you need me. Oh, bless my heart as we came up for prayer today. And some people were just weeping in the presence of the Lord as we sang that song. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense. My righteousness. Oh, God, I need you. You all were displayed our dependence upon God. You know how it blesses the Father's heart. But God said through the mouth of the Apostle Paul that in the last days there would be a great falling away. Many people are falling out of love with Jesus. Don't fall out of love with Him. Amen. As Jesus said in Matthew 24, 13, He that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Endure what? Endure the great falling away. I believe that. A lot of people falling out of church. That don't have to be you. Come on. A lot of people falling away from the truth of God's word. They don't believe God's word anymore. Don't believe God can heal. You know that's falling away from the truth of God's word? I don't believe God can save that person. Well, the Bible says that God can save anybody. Nothing is, it may be impossible with you, but nothing is impossible with God. If you no longer believe God can save anybody, you're falling away from the truths of God's word. Amen. Oh, yes. Many today are falling away oh, from, uh, from the presence of God or falling out of love with Jesus. But Jesus says you've got to endure. Endure. Yeah, nobody else may want to serve God, but you've got to make up your mind. Are you going to serve God? I'm going to close in just a minute. One time, somebody told me, any dead fish can float down the current. Come on. But it takes a live salmon to swim up current or any way he wants. We got enough dead fishes in this world today that are just going with the flow. God says, I didn't call you to be dead. Because I live, you can live. Come on. Because he lives, you can live. The last thing is this. And it's not even in the notes, Sister Sasha. But in studying this text of 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse number 3, let's read it again. You can put it up there on the screen though, Sasha. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, our opening text. Let no man deceive you by 
any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And then it says, and the man of sin be revealed. Who's the man of sin? The man of perdition? It's the Antichrist. All right. Now, the term falling away comes from the Greek word apostasia or apostasy. How many can say apostasy? apostasy? If you look up that word apostasy, when you get home in your Strong's Concordance, you'll see that there are two different definitions to the word apostasy. The first definition of apostasia is to turn one's back on the truth. And that's the primary definition that we have used today as the Lord has placed it in my spirit. But there is another definition that can be interchanged along with that definition. And the other definition of apostasia means a physical departure. How many got a Jimmy Swagger expositor study Bible? You probably saw that in the note then. A physical departure. In essence, you can say, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a physical departure first. And then the man of sin be revealed. So what does it mean? What's the right translation? Does apostasia mean falling away from Christ or a physical departure? Here's my answer. Both. Both. Because in the last days, we know that people, the Bible says in the late see in church age that they will become very lukewarm. Hello? Falling out of love with Jesus. Leaving. Not losing. Leaving their first love. So we know that there will be a great falling away. But we also know, Sister Shauna, there will be a physical departure. Amen. And I don't know about you, I got my practice in on my Clydesdale horse. Last week, I'm ready to I'm ready to come back with Jesus. Can you say amen? Oh, but you see, church, in the last days, there will be people falling away from the truth of God's word. But there is also another event that will happen, and it's called the rapture of the church. Whenever you and I will physically depart from this world. How many of you know who Tucker Carlson is? A couple of us. If you stream that uh, channel, Sister Dolores, can you come to the piano? That way I'll know I can. I have to stop. If I can go by the end time, I can keep going and going and going. And y'all will say, yeah, keep it coming. But as soon as the clock, stop, the clock strikes 12, I know you. Yeah. You're ready to leave. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. Turn that watch upside down. And then y'all like, Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tucker Carlson has a new show streaming on uh, Fox Nation, I think it is called, about UFOs. Anybody got any tinfoil? We can make hats. That way they can read our minds. <laughs> Sometimes Miranda says, I'm reading your mind. But I need to give me one of them tinfoil hats. <laughs> government has now stated that aliens and life on other planets do exist. I said, Pastor, you really believe that? I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that junk. Why, though? Because the Bible also speaks in the last days that there would be a strong delusion. Did you know that more people believe in aliens in the United States than, than of those that believe Jesus is the Son of God? More people believe in aliens than believe that Jesus was the Son of God. In the last days, Paul said, there will be a falling away from the truth. Brothers and sisters, why all the talk about aliens and stuff? What kind of church is this anyway? 
Hey, we do got a green wall back there. <laughs> now, you know what it is? The Antichrist spirit is already here. He's preparing people to explain away why suddenly millions of born-again believers vanished in the twinkling of an eye. Where are they? What is going on? Is it a nuclear attack? Is it Russia? Is it China? Is it Iran? Is it North Korea? What has happened? I know what it is. Aliens have abducted all these people. You may think I'm crazy. I'm, I'm telling you, there is a spirit running rampant in this land of deception. Brothers and sisters, I'm not looking for signs. I'm listening for a trumpet. Amen. Amen. Pretty soon the trumpet of God is going to sound. Jesus is going to. You should have brought your shofar, Riley. You should have brought that today. You could have blown that thing for me. Amen. Oh, you ordered it though. Oh, okay. When it comes in, I'm going to give you a warning. For you. <laughs> Come in here and blow that shofar as the sound of a trumpet. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? With every head bowed, all the eyes closed. Can we all stand, please? Father, I preach what you've laid upon my heart. I know I preach a lot about the end times. But God, I only preach because it's, it's been what you've been giving me. And Lord, I know that you're coming very, very soon. Lord, my job as a pastor is to be a watchman. God, I pray for those that are growing lukewarm and cold. Stir them up today. Do with their hearts. For those that are falling in love with the world and falling out of love with Jesus, I pray that you would deal with their hearts. May they understand their need for you. In Jesus' name. I know you're coming soon. There's a great falling away. Many turning away from you. But it's not going to be said of me. And by faith, it's not going to be said of anybody in this house. We're going to choose to watch and to wait for your coming. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here today that says, Pastor William, I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus. I'm not ready for this event that you're talking about today. I'm not ready for the rapture. But I want to get ready today. Okay, there's only one way to get ready. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Is there anybody here today that'd be bold enough to think, I don't care what anybody else thinks, I'm going to receive eternal life today. If you want eternal life, why don't you come? I'm not going to beg anybody. I don't do that. But if you're here today and you say, I need Christ. I believe he's coming. And I don't want to be left behind. Why don't you come? Yesterday at our Bible study with our children, we have a the devotional nearly every night of the week. And I told them about pride. And I said, kids, what is pride? Michaela said, whenever someone knows they need to get saved, but they stay in their seat because they don't want anybody to laugh at them. <laughs> I said, you are a preacher's daughter. <laughs> That's pride. Don't let pride rob you of eternal life. If you need Jesus, why don't you come? Let's all find a place to pray. Let's pray at this altar. We can pray, you can pray at your seat as well. But let's just spend some time talking with Jesus today. He's coming. There's a great falling away. You don't have to be a part of it. He that shall endure to the end, the same will be saved. Amen. When my life is worth a living just because he lives and because he lives.